Hello everyone, welcome to biology class. In this class we are going to see 1200 botany chapter 4 principles and processes of biotechnology. Biotechnology is the science of applied biological process. Okay, applied biological process is nothing but the process that is of benefit for mankind and other life forms. The term was coined by Carl Ericke, a Hungarian engineer in 1919. And this process has been extended to include any process in which the organism, tissue, cell, organelle or isolated molecules such as enzymes are used to convert the biological or other raw material to the products of greater value. Development of Biotechnology so, this biotechnology field has developed in a rapid manner during the past century. And this development can be understood from the two main heads namely conventional or traditional biotechnology and modern biotechnology. First, conventional or traditional biotechnology. So, this is otherwise referred to as kitchen technology and it is developed by our ancestors and it is as old as human civilization. So, the products of daily importance like dairy products, curd, ghee, cheese and the foods like idli, dosa, naan, bread, pizza, they are all used uh, or produced using bacteria and other microbes and this technology is called kitchen technology. And this conventional biotechnology is also extended for the preparation of the alcoholic beverages like beer, wine, etc. And with the advancement of the science and technology during the 18th century, these kitchen technologies gain scientific validation. The modern biotechnology. So, the modern biotechnology has two main features. And based on these two main features only, this modern biotechnology gets differentiated from the conventional biotechnology. The ability to change the genetic material. So, in the previous conventional technology, we are going to use the entire organism whether it is a bacteria or a yeast, we are going to use the entire microorganism as such. But here, in modern biotechnology, we are going to alter the genetic material according to the requirement by recombinant DNA technology and ownership of the newly developed technology and its social impact. And hence, biotechnology is a billion dollar business around the world and many pharmaceutical companies Okay, they are producing many valuable products like insulin, interferon, antibiotics, vitamins, etc. And in case of breweries, they are producing beer, wine, etc. And agro industries for the production of biofertilizer, biopesticides, etc. And even other biotechnology based industries for their product improvement. And the modern biotechnology embraces all methods of genetic modification. So, they are utilizing the modern methods like recombinant DNA and cell fusion technology and let's see the major focus of biotechnology. So, this biotechnology is employed for fermentation process okay for the production of acid, enzyme, alcohols, antibiotics, chemicals, vitamins and toxins and also used for biomass for bulk production of single cell protein alcohol and biofuel and enzymes are also produced by biotechnology which are serving as biosensor and biofuels are produced such as hydrogen, alcohol, methane which is an alternative for the coal based fuel and microbial inoculants such as biofertilizer which is the replacement for the chemical fertilizer and nitrogen, uh, even nitrogen fixers are also produced and plant and animal cell culture for the production of the secondary metabolites, monoclonal antibodies etc. And the recombinant DNA technology for production of the chemical substances, enzymes, vaccines, growth hormones, antibiotics, interferons, etc. And uh, even biotechnology is employed as a process engineering. Uh, for example, in case of the effluent treatment or water recycling, biotechnology plays a vital role. Next topic is fermentation. Fermentation is derived from the Latin verb fervia which means to boil. So, it is a metabolic process in which the organic molecule that is normally a sugar called glucose, it is converted into acid, gas or alcohol and this process takes place in the absence of oxygen. And this study of fermentation and its practical uses is called zymology and it originated in 1856. And uh, this 
Fermentation process was first demonstrated uh, in yeast by a French chemist Louis Pasteur. Fermentation occurs in even certain types of bacteria and fungi and that require an oxygen-free environment. That's why fermentation is otherwise referred to as anaerobic respiration. So, it takes place in the absence of oxygen. And the process of fermentation are valuable to the food and beverage industry with the conversion of sugar into ethanol okay, for the production of alcoholic beverages. And even in the food industry, it is uh, employed, fermentation process is employed because as it releases carbon dioxide uh, and this process is uh, made by yeast and uh, it is used for the leavening of bread okay and uh, with the production of organic acids to preserve and flavor vegetable and dairy products and what you are seeing now it is a bioreactor or a fermenter it is nothing but a vessel and this vessel is designed in such a way that optimum condition or optimum environment uh, in which the microorganism or the enzymes interact with the substrate to produce the required product. And uh, in the bioreactor, aeration, agitation, temperature, pH, etc. are controlled. And the fermentation involves two processes. One is upstream process and the other one is downstream process. First, let's see what is upstream process. So, upstream process is nothing but all the processes before the starting of the fermenter so before the fermenter is, was started the process that we make is referred to as upstream process that is first we will be sterilizing the fermenter that is the vessel or the bioreactor and after sterilizing it we will be uh, preparing and sterilizing the culture medium that we are going to add in the fermenter and uh, also we will be growing the suitable inoculum so which you are going to inoculate into the culture medium that also will be keeping it ready and so, all the processes before the starting of fermenter is called upstream process. The second process is downstream process. All the process after the fermentation process, before means upstream, after the fermentation process is called downstream. That is which involves the extraction and purification of the product. Okay, And it includes various processes like distillation, centrifuging, filtration and solvent extraction. Let's see the procedure of fermentation. So, depending upon the type of the product, the bioreactor is selected. A suitable substrate, uh, the liquid media is added and the, it should be uh, at a specific temperature, the pH and then it should be diluted. The organism is added to it. So, it can be either an entire microorganism or it can be an animal or plant cell or an organelle or enzyme. So, this serves as an inoculum. After the inoculum is added to the liquid media, it has to be incubated at a specific uh, temperature for a specific time and the incubation may be carried out aerobic or anaerobically based upon the requirement and later once the process is over the withdrawal of the product okay is done using the downstream processing methods this is the procedure of fermentation next we are going to see what are the applications of fermentation in industries the fermentation as industrial applications such as Number one, microbial biomass production. So, the entire microbial cell can be produced and they can be directly used as a complete protein called SCP, single cell protein, has human food or animal feed. Number two, microbial metabolites. So, the microbes will produce certain compounds that are useful to the man and animals. So, those compounds are called as metabolites. So, these metabolites can be grouped into two categories. One is primary metabolite which the microorganism is producing for its own maintenance of life processes. Okay, they are called primary metabolites and there are few examples ethanol, citric acid, lactic acid, acetic acid etc. And secondary metabolite is nothing but they are not required for its own um, life process but it has value added product for example certain uh, microorganism will be producing antibiotics as a secondary metabolite which we will be using okay for the treatment of diseases the antibiotics will be extracted from those microorganisms and will be using in similar way certain alkaloids vitamins are also extracted from the microorganism as a secondary metabolite the third application of fermentation is microbial enzymes when microbes are cultured, they secrete some enzymes into the growth media. And these enzymes are industrially used in detergents, 
ஃபுட் ப்ராசஸிங் இண்டஸ்ட்ரி ப்ரூயிங் இண்டஸ்ட்ரி அண்ட் ஃபார்மசியூட்டிக்கல் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ப்ரோட்டியேஸ் அமைலேஸ் ஐசோமெரிஸ் லைபேஸ் எக்ஸெட்ரா த லாஸ்ட் அப்ளிகேஷன் ஆஃப் ஃபர்மெண்டேஷன் இஸ் பயோ கன்வர்ஷன் பயோ டிரான்ஸ்ஃபர்மேஷன் ஆர் மாடிஃபிகேஷன் ஆஃப் த சப்ஸ்டேட் So, the fermenting microbe has the capacity to produce valuable products. For example, the conversion of ethanol to acetic acid vinegar, isopropanol to acetone, sorbitol to sorbose which is used for production of vitamin C and sterols to steroid. So, all these reactions, the conversion or the fermentation uh, microbe uh, is aiding or helpful for the reactions to take place. The next topic we are going to see is about single cell protein a very important topic the single cell proteins are dried cells of microorganism and these scp is used as a protein supplement in case of human food or animal feed the single cell protein offers an unconventional unconventional but plausible solution because the humans are facing the protein deficiency which can be solved easily by means of the single cell protein the single cell protein have high nutritive value okay because it has got higher content of protein more amount of vitamins essential amino acids lipids but uh, due to its high nucleic acid content and slower uh, digestibility uh, the people are hesitating to use this scp let's see the microorganism use for production of scp so they are as follows let's see some bacteria which are employed for the production of scp methelophilus methelotrophus cellulomonas alkaligens and fungi agaricus campesteris saccharomyces cerevisiae candida utilis and algae spirulina chlorella chlamydomonas these are the algae employed as single cell proteins the single cell protein forms an important source of food because of their protein content carbohydrates fats vitamins and minerals and it is used by astronauts and antarctica expedition scientist and spirulina okay it is an algae and it is can be easily grown on raw, raw materials such as waste water from uh, potato processing plants straw molasses molasses is nothing but after the extraction of the sugar from sugar cane the left out is referred to as molasses animal manure and even sewage to produce large quantities and can serve as food rich in protein minerals fats carbohydrates and vitamins and such utilization okay because we are using the waste so this utilization will also uh, reduce the environmental pollution and 250 g of methelophilus methelotrophus so this is the bacteria which is employed for scp production so they are telling 250 g of methelophilus methelotrophus has its high rate of biomass production that is 25 tons of proteins is expected to be produced by using just a 250 g of methelophilus so this is the picture which is showing the spirulina uh, okay uh, scp applications of single cell protein this single cell protein is used as a protein supplement and it is also used as, as a cosmetic product for healthy hair and skin and it is used in poultry as excellent source of proteins and other nutrients and uh, it is used for feeding cattle birds fishes etc and it is used in food industry okay as an aroma carrier or a vitamin carrier emulsifying agents and also used in baked products or for the preparation of the soups and even in diet recipes this scp is used and also it is used in industries like paper processing industry leather processing industry etc so these are the applications of single cell protein so in this class we have seen in detail about uh, the fermentation the upstream and downstream process the process of fermentation we have seen and also we have seen about the applications of fermentation and we have seen about single cell protein uh, the microorganism employed for its production and also its applications thank you meet you in the next video